Paraphrasing is not hard if you know how to do it. It happens to be a simple five-step process, and let me walk you through it. Step one, make sure you're clear on your own argument or thesis. Before you go off to use other people's content in your essay or research paper, you need to make sure you're crystal clear on what exactly you're trying to express. Because if you don't, then paraphrasing will be difficult. Now, you'll be struggling in every sentence because you're not sure how another author's passage will fit your argument. In other words, before you lay a brick, make sure you know what the house will ultimately look like. To learn this skill, check out my tutorial on essay writing for beginners, and I have the link in the description. Step two, pick a spot where you will use paraphrasing. You should really use paraphrasing in the body of the essay. Body paragraphs contain three parts, the lead sentence, the explanation, and the examples part, because it flows from general to specific. And you should be paraphrasing in the explanation and the examples parts of the body paragraph. Step three, read the passage you want to paraphrase. Obviously, you have to read it. So take the time to read the original passage and make sure you understand it thoroughly. Look for the main subject. What or whom is this passage about? Now look for the Look for the main point. What is the author really trying to say? Look for any evidence the author is using to support his argument. Step four, rewrite the ideas of the passage in your own words. And I'm going to give you four techniques to do that. Technique one, begin your sentence or passage at a different point from the one the author starts at. For example, if the sentence starts with a cause and ends with an effect, start your sentence talking about the effect and then explain the cause. And I'll give you an example later. Technique number two, use synonyms. Arm yourself with a thesaurus. A thesaurus is like a dictionary only for synonyms and antonyms. Online versions work just fine. Technique three, rearrange the sentence or passage. For example, the original passage may contain general and specific statements located haphazardly. You can arrange the contents of the passage to flow from general to specific. And technique number four, chunk up or chunk down. If the original sentence is very long, you can chunk it down into two or more sentences. If the passage contains two or more sentences that can be combined, you can chunk them up into one sentence. And again, I'll give you an example of how to do that as well. And finally, step five, you want to edit your paraphrase passage for flow. Just make sure the sentences flow nicely from one to another. And now let me give you some paraphrasing examples. Okay, here's our paraphrasing example one. Here's the original passage. Carbs are the best way to fuel your body, but choose the right ones. Cutting back on carbs like the added sugars in soft drinks, candy, and pastries will cut calories and is great for your overall health. Replacing those carbs with nutrient-rich choices like whole grains, fruits, and vegetables will give you the nutrients you need for good health, along with the fuel your body craves to perform at its best. And let's look at the paraphrase. The right carbs are the best source of fuel for the human body. The best carbs for overall health come from whole foods and added sugars are best avoided. In order to provide the body with high quality fuel, it's best to give preference to whole grains, fruits and veggies over soda and sugary snacks. All right, so what have we done here? In the first sentence, we use technique one, which is flipping the beginning and the ending of a sentence. The original ends with choosing the right carbs. We begin with it. See, this is the original. Carbs are the best way to fuel your body, but choose the right ones. And this is our version. The right carbs are the best source of fuel for the human body. See how the original sentence talks about the right type of carbs towards the end, and we begin with the right type of carbs. The next two sentences in the paraphrase are an example of using technique three, rearranging content. So here's what we did. We took more general concepts and put them in sentence two. And sentence three is more specific because it provides examples of the ideas in the previous sentence. So why did we do that? We did that because a paragraph, an ideal paragraph, should proceed from general to specific. But it doesn't always happen that way in the original passage. The authors don't necessarily write their passages that way. So when you paraphrase, what you can do is rearrange the content to flow from general to specific. And that's exactly what we did here. This is the original. Cutting back on carbs like the added sugars, you see? Cutting back on carbs, this is general, and now the author goes into examples. The added sugars in soft drinks, candy, and pastries. These are examples. Now, in the next sentence, the author goes replacing those carbs with nutrient-rich choices like whole grains, fruits, and vegetables 
And again, that those are examples will give you the nutrients you need for good health along with the fuel. There's a bit of a general and then to specific, then general and then specific. That's how the, this, the original passage is constructed. And this is what we did with it. The best carbs for overall health come from whole foods and added sugars are best avoided. You see, that's all general, no examples. And now we continue again from more general and we end with examples. In order to provide the body with high quality fuel, it's best to give preference to what? To examples, whole grains, fruits and veggies over soda and sugary snacks. See, examples come last. Here's our second paraphrasing example. Here's the original passage. For almost a full century, the mission of U.S. educational measurement has been to elicit test taker scores so those scores can be compared with one another. This is a good and useful thing to do, particularly so in situations where the number of applicants exceeds the number of openings. To make a flock of important educational decisions, we need to identify our strongest and weakest performing students. Okay, now we need to paraphrase. And here it is. Gathering and comparing the scores of test takers has been the purpose of U.S. scholastic measurement for almost a hundred years. A viable strategy? This is especially useful when applicants outnumber the available openings. Students demonstrating the strongest and weakest performance should be identified in order to enable effective decision-making in education. All right, so what exactly have we done? In sentence one, we use techniques one and two. First, we flip the beginning and the ending of the sentence. The paraphrased version feels as if we are reading the original from end to beginning. And as you watch the video, feel free to rewind and pause. Compare the passages, read the original, and then read the paraphrase again, and you will see the differences. Next, we used a bunch of synonyms. Century, in the original, became 100 years, in the paraphrase. Now, mission became purpose. You see, these things are very synonymous. Eliciting became gathering. What else did we do? We also used synonymous language in sentence two. A good and useful thing to do became a viable strategy. These are synonymous things. Now, the number exceeds became outnumber. Yeah, to exceed in number means to outnumber. Again, we're just using a bunch of synonyms. And in sentence three, we use technique three, and we switch the sentence from the active voice to the passive voice. And you should only do this sparingly. However, feel free to switch from the passive to the active voice as often as you want, because the active voice is better and more desirable. Here's our paraphrasing example three, the original passage. Successfully confronting the topic of race is a constant struggle within the U.S. history curriculum. This shortcoming is not due to historians or practitioners' inability to see the correlation between race and history, but instead is due to the innate nature in which history is told. Rochester and Hefner, 2020. Okay, this is the original. Let's take a look at the paraphrase. Teachers of U.S. history continuously struggle to effectively discuss the topic of race. The cause of the problem is not that historians or practitioners cannot see the race history correlation. The real challenge is inherent in the way they tell the history. Now, what have we done? We again use synonyms throughout the passage. Since the subject in the first sentence is history curriculum, we know that it is about teachers of history. Why? Because a curriculum refers to teaching and learning. The word curriculum implies education and educators are teachers. So look for such clues in the original passage. And instead of saying history should be told, now you can say teachers should tell the history. Next, we use technique four in the second sentence of the original passage. This sentence is long and can be easily broken down into two shorter ones. That's exactly what we did. And we use technique two again, using synonyms. Shortcoming became cause of the problem. Innate became inherent. And finally, we use technique four and turned the nature history is told to telling the history. So in effect, we switched from passive to active voice, which is an improvement. All right, I hope this was helpful, and I do have a full tutorial on essay writing for beginners, so if you happen to be struggling with essay writing in general, you should definitely check it out. I have the link in the description. All right, don't forget to like the video, and I will see you in upcoming videos.